What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called The Bloodline. This is another one of those one-man operations that's been making the circulation on Reddit and a couple other places for the last year or two, with most of the GIFs showing sort of explosive first-person RPG battlefield action a la something like Dynasty. Something like Dynasty Warriors, I guess. I don't know. It seems like a battlefield first-person Skyrim-style RPG that also has this level of physics to it where you can swipe your sword with some magic attached and launch 12 guys to the hills that are off in the distance. So I figured we'd check it out here today. We'd take a look at the early access and we would figure out uh, if this is one of those games that you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. As of right now, I haven't really touched the game. I'm aware of the game, kind of, from the pressers and things that have gone out, but I haven't played it yet, so this should be an impressions video. Along the way, I'll try to talk about the things I like or don't like about the game. That way, it'll maybe bring them to your attention and help you decide whether or not this is a good purchase for you. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can check it out there. On top of that, you can also take a look down there for a lot more Splattercat content over on Twitch.tv. That link is down there along with my Discord just in case you wanted to chat. Let's hit the ground running. We're going to name this one Buttfard. There we go. Apparently that's me, huh? As you can tell, this game is making use of Sinti assets. Uh, that is a very, very, very popular asset pack right now in indie gaming. And we've got like a number of customization options that are available. It looks like they've all been sprinkled throughout. I'll probably leave it kind of the way that it is, in all honesty. I don't really care too much. I kind of just want to get into the gameplay. But for the moment, those are the customization options that are going to be available. Seems like there's a pretty wide variety of things that you can play around with on both this tab over here and this tab over here. Unfortunately, these are mostly things that I've already seen in other games as far as facial hair and whatnot goes. That's going to be one of the downsides to using an asset pack for a lot of your game generation. But that's probably just fatigue on my part because I play like a gazillion games a week. So I've seen all these presets in a dozen different games. Uh, let's go ahead and create our character real quick. All right. And it actually starts us off right here in the middle of our castle, I suppose. I seem to be doing pretty well for myself. This is a really, really nice castle, man. You could fit like four of my real life house inside this room. All right. What does this guy have to say? Who are you? What are Frederick Woodkin the Armorer. Press spacebar to jump. Yeah, I'll do all the tutorialization stuff. Oh, it's purdy out here, dude. It's like super purdy out here. There's like a world to explore. Adventure is out there. All right, so I walked around the castle grounds for a little while, and this is actually a pretty big sprawling area, and almost every single person that I've talked to so far has had a quest or an activity. Everything from platforming puzzles to like quests to go out and kill goblins. And so you can see on the right hand side all the various jobs that the game has given me. As I've been talking to my townsfolk and it appears to me as though you're able to actually like build up this castle add things to it and make it a little bit more livable. Uh, they gave me a spear. I can stab guys with it. And so I figure I'll go stab guys with it. I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but they gave me a quest to go murder some goblins. So that's exactly what I'm going to go do. Now, from the time I've spent running around playing the game, I found that the game does indeed have Skyrim style skills like Bethesda style. If you utilize skills, those skills get better. Every time you get a skill or, like, gain a skill level in one of those kind of connected things, the little meter in the top left that's around your level will increase. And once it fills up completely, you get an entirely new character level. The adventure begins with some light stabbing. Look at me, goblins. Despair, for I stab at thee with might and verve. Impacts feel pretty good on the weapons right now. Liking the way that it feels. Hitboxes feel like they're configured properly. Oh, there's another one right there, too. Is that a... I thought I said goblin wife. I thought it, like, distinctively called out that there was, like, four goblins inside of here. And then also... Oh, their arms and legs and stuff came off, too. Sucks to be them, man. But on the plus side, I have defeated all of the goblins. And so we can kind of go back with our head held high and tell people that we solved at least one of the pressing issues for the kingdom, which is that these are pretty brazen goblins, man. They did set up, like... 
six inches away from my castle. And I don't like it when people are creeping on my domain like that. Uh, it looks like over here we can make new plots so you can build towers. It looks like there's going to be both a construction and a crafting system. So like plot four, you could put in a great many different buildings, in fact. There's a lot of things to play around with here when I was going through the list. Let's go back to town. We're going to figure out whether or not we can get ourselves a little bit of a reward for stacking some goblin bodies up to the ceiling. All right, boss man. Hit me with that quest loot. Give me the goodies right here. What kind of magical plus three agility thong am I going to get? I did take care of the goblins. You are ready to head out on your own. Okay, okay. What do I do now? Seeing that you can handle yourself, make pilgrimage to the steps of Esros. It's a pilgrimage site, or at least it was. Now it's kind of like a ruin, only visited every few decades by the Harbinger bloodline. Usually the next in line Harbinger is brought to the steps by the current Harbinger, but your father is no longer with us. To my knowledge, you will be the first Harbinger to do that pilgrimage alone. Nothing to fret about, though. It's ceremonial. No dangers awaiting you at the steps. Okay, can you take my father's place? I'd be honored to do so, but I cannot. It's sacrilegious. Okay, fair. Where's the steps? They overlook the Elder Glen Woods just north of here. Head there and make your way to the top of the steps. The shrine is your goal. All right, cool, man. Um, so it looks like there's like a trading post, a requisition office. If I can get some iron ore and then also get some wood bundles. I don't know how to do all those activities. There's also mounted combat, by the way. You can build a stable over here. So apparently at some point we're going to be able to do some kind of like mountain blade style mounted combat. I, I can't really speak to the controls of that, but let's keep working on quests and stuff. And as I find things, I'll cut the video back in and I will show them to you as is proper with an impressions video. So it looks like this right here is going to be our overworld map, which is simple. But at the same time, doesn't really matter that it's overly simple as long as it can help me identify points of interest that I want to go out and interact with. So it looks like we're headed off to the Elder Glen Woods. I've gone ahead and told it to go. And it looks like there's actually going to be little quick time events along the road to like chop down trees and stuff like that. I was actually curious, dude. I was running around in the wilderness with my spear trying to like spear a tree just to see if I could get any kind of bonus or anything else like that. And unfortunately, that was not how lumberjacking worked inside the context of this game. So, I'm pretty sure we get most of our materials by, like, cruising around the map and generally uh, having adventures of one sort or another. I don't know if there's, like, a way to speed this up. Surely there must be. Who knows? It wants me... I mean, it looks like there's some other little locations we can go to as well. Set up camp and explore the area. Yeah, let's do it. I want I want to explore the lake. Let's go look at the lock. Maybe there's something good out here. We don't this is the fun of open world games is that I don't necessarily have to do the main storyline quest or anything else like that. Uh yeah, dude, fly a Garrick, sure. I got some foraging XP. Where's my spear? I I would like for my spear to be out just in case. I feel like it was his birch tree right here. Level 3 woodcutting to get that guy. Oh, God. Okay. Yep. Oh, I got a click. Okay, I was hitting the E key right there. That's why the first two failed. We got a click. All right, that's fine. Clicky time. Clicky time. There we go. We're getting all the wood chopping XP. And if we get enough wood and whatnot, and we can find enough stone, chances are we can actually build up some of the buildings back at our base, too, which would be absolutely beautiful now i don't know if any other wild stuff is going to happen out here but i've hit level three what exactly does that mean for my character let's find out it looks like our skill trees are divided up into four categories one of which is maybe not implemented yet or possibly we don't have the proper support building in order to make use of it so instead we've got melee subcategories one-handed weapons two-handed weapons Okay, cool, cool. And it looks like inside of these, they've each got themselves a skill tree that you can play around with. So here we have the Pierce of Fikleys. I guess we'll try that out. And then we've got Cranial Impact on that side. Or we've got Bleed Spear. All right, let's get Bleed Spear. I would recommend that they brighten up the outline right here for the stuff you have or have not bought. Uh, it's a little bit dim and it's a little bit... Can you tell the difference other than that little line right there going in a circle between the abilities that we've bought 
and the abilities that we have not. In my opinion, the abilities that have not been built should be gray, and the ones that have been bought should go into their full color template right there. Or uh, they should be a little bit smaller or something if you haven't bought them, and then when you buy them, they get bigger and brighter. Something like that. I don't know. Right now, it's kind of hard to tell what you've bought and what you haven't if you don't see the little tiny one pixel white line orbiting right there. Uh, now that I have some spear skills, I'm going to continue looking around the, the lake. I don't know if there's going to be anything too interesting out here. I mean, there's a mausoleum over there, and I'm assuming I can just, like, walk over there and go look at it. It also looks like each time we level up, we have the ability to increase one of our capabilities. So it looks like we can get more stamina, we can lift heavy stuff, we can get more health. I would say probably health would be a good idea, and then maybe some stamina. That's, that feels like a solid play to me. It also appears as though we have a full crafting menu over here on the side that's controlled with the middle mouse wheel and the left click where you can build different decorations for your town. It looks like you can build different buildings that certain people prefer. So it'll be interesting to see how they fold that into the overall gameplay and like idea of how this all functions. I can pick up some goblin mold. That's not too bad. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, lady, calm down. Get out of here. Nobody wants to talk to you. Leave me alone. Go away. Your leg came off. I didn't think a piercing weapon could actively do that, but your leg done come off. I apologize for that little bit disrespectful, but that's the way it goes. I want my... Yeah, where's my abilities at? Show me my abilities here. Okay, so I can like... That's like a big old thrust. And then that's also like a big old thrust. Okay. We got this covered. What's inside this old castle over here? What's up, bro? You want to battle? I'll battle you right... Ooh, he thought. He thought. How does the blocking work? Okay, it's the same as so. Apparently, the developer of this game is a big fan of Vermintide. Uh, because the melee combat in this game functions pretty much identically. Uh, it doesn't look like I've got the same... It looks like I can kind of, like, shift around. I don't know if I get any type of, you know, bonus for doing that. Looks like I got two gold for killing that goblin over there. How much is this one worth? These goblins are, like, super worth it to murder. Oh, God, I disintegrated that one. Okay, yeah, dude, hyper-violence, hell yeah. Uh, these are whelps right now, which leads me to believe that I'm actually just, like, beating up goblin children. I'm not actually fighting somebody that's worth my time here. I'm just, like, murdering somebody's offspring, which makes me kind of feel bad about myself. Then again, there's also an argument to be made that seeking out pity for feeling bad about myself while actively murdering the goblin children of others is probably a sign that I'm a bad person. Like, those two ideas don't seem like they're copacetic with one another. Is there anything going on inside of here? Like... Uh-oh. I think they're aware of me. They know. Is there any kind of, like, treasure or anything I can have? In oh, where'd you come from? What's up? Here, let me stab you. Have fun bleeding out and dying. <laughs> I don't know if that stuff can be destroyed. Oh, I can open this guy. It's got a forging hammer, and it's got a dwarven jambia. Okay, I don't know what a jambia is. Sounds like a song that you sing, like when they bring out dinner or something. Sing the jambia. Hey -oh. Like, it feels like one of those, like, songs. It's like a celebratory song uh, about, like, super awesome food being brought to you or something. Ow! Listen, turd. I don't think you want to play this game with me. There we go. Get him with the stabs. Get him with the stabs. That's what I'm talking about. We'll just sit him down good and strong. All right. So now that I've validated that I am the superior quality pikeman in the realm. Oh, there's another one down there. It's going to seek me out into... Oh, I've like aggroed apparently the entire dungeon. That's going to be, that's going to be my bad. Didn't mean to do that, but that's the way that it's gone. Uh, we are a death dealer of goblins, happy to say. Why are you taking so little damage? Oh, he had armor on, and it breaks and it falls off of him. You love to see it. I actually really, really like the way that that sounds. Okay. So, like, you hit him, and then when you hit him with strong strikes, eventually his armor falls off. Gotcha. I think we also have a grappling hook. I'm not exactly sure how it functions but we do have a grappling hook so you know I don't know if there's like specific grapple spots if that's a thing I got to keep an eye out for I don't know 
no clue whatsoever. That bird right there looks kind of hostile, man. Can I get him? Oh, I did get him. Sweet. Got a bunch of feathers, too. I don't know if they're... Oh, my God. There's so many of them. Okay. All right. All right. You're the big man. You're the big man. I think it may be plausible that I'm out of stamina. Oh, and we regenerate so slowly. Everything here is a terrible idea, and I regret all my decisions. Uh, there are a lot of foes here. Uh, I think that my initial admission that I 100% definitely need to get more stamina was right. And so I'm going to focus on stamina after this level. I'm going to fall back a little bit, too, because I'm not feeling uber competent about my ability to close right now. Like, winners get sunflower seeds, and, you know, closers get the, get the prize package, but it's not working out so great for me right now. Let's just breathe for a second. Get some stamina back. It took a little while. It looks like after about like 60 seconds or like 45 seconds out of combat, your stamina starts to come back in big chunks, but not until then. I don't know what's up with the, was I supposed to be killing crows or something? I don't know, man. It looked like he had a little tag on him. Perfect. Drop you. Good. Combat feels good, man. Like, I'm happy with the combat right now. I know it might look a little wonky from the outside looking in, but it actually feels all right. And I'm willing to bet if I had gone with a more standard weapon, like something kind of like a greatsword or something, it would probably feel even better. I think a spear is a very, very difficult weapon to imply like... Imp wow, these guys all have armor. That's super bad. I don't like that one bit. There we go. Get his armor. Stab him. This little wizard guy's got to go. He doesn't just, like, kind of have to go. He, like, super has to go. There we go. All right, what did he drop? What are these What are these goodies right here that you dropped? A goblin mace. Yeah, let's... Oi! Calm down, you little turd. I just need, like, a second. Let me... Let me breathe, man. I wanted to... I want to... I want to equip a new weapon. That's what I want to do. So we've got 20 damage right there, speed below average. Yeah, but it's like a bonk stick, though. Okay, we'll see how this feels. We'll try out the bonk stick for a minute. I can't use any of my abilities with the bonk stick, which may maybe eliminate our efficacy in combat. But it does seem to knock him around a little bit by comparison to the spear, for sure. So I'm sort of beginning to wonder if certain enemies maybe have resistances against certain damage types, possibly. What's inside this sack right here? Flour and wheat. That seems like something that would be useful for hungry townsfolk. I'll go ahead and take it. Is anybody else inside of here? I like these little open free adventure zones, man. I'm kind of digging it right now. Uh, we got apples. We got arrows. We got mushrooms. All kinds of goodies inside that cabinet right there. That maybe can be like a squirrel away home. Is there going to be like a main boss encounter in here? Kind of curious what's up in these towers too. Let's go look. Sort of like waiting on my health to come back, too. Doesn't look like there's anybody guarding the towers. I'm kind of curious. Did I make it all the way up to the top floor up there? I feel like I did. And there wasn't that much to look at. Who is this? Stitch Stitch. Who the hell is Stitch Snitch? Oh. Is that just like his gag is that he runs off? And, like, warns everybody else that I'm coming and, like, aggros them or something. One-handed weapons. This thing uses a lot more stamina, but it hits a lot harder. That's what I'm learning. Uh, there's blood and gore everywhere, and we are ready for a level up. Uh, I would like stamina, stamina, stamina all day long. Health is fine. Stamina needs work. So I'm just going to keep dumping loads of points into stamina, and maybe it'll work out. I probably shouldn't be spreading my points around into, like, different things like mace, spear. I should probably, like, specialize in something. Uh, there is a fishing mini game in this title as well, in case you were unaware of that. So if you're the kind of person that's up on the Steam forums for every single game, no matter what, being like, we need a fishing mini game, uh, this game has that. Uh, it looks like I can swim, maybe? Oh, yeah, I can. Well, that's good. Look out below. Oh, apparently it counted me as falling or something because I jumped in the water. I'm going to go over to this island. You can see the fishing spots right there with the splashies. There's a mausoleum over here, and I want to see what it's got inside of it. So it seems like the core gameplay loop is 
fairly defined. Like, the point of this game is to go out and adventure and make camp in randomized zones that are semi-open world. You walk around, you beat up monsters, you fight critters, you find loot, uh, you get goodies, and then you bring some of that stuff back home in, in order to make your castle more successful, basically. Oh, this guy is way tougher than I am. Oh, no. Lots of armor, too. Just please die. There we go. If you could just die for me, that would be amazing. I lost all my health in one fight. Okay, we don't want to be out at the mausoleum. I think the mausoleum might be a little bit gnarly for us. Dude, this zone is pretty big, man. I've been wandering around now for like, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes. Just like testing the boundaries of where you can go. And it feels like they've kind of got that... I, I call this kind of like the Nintendo principle... Uh, because this is a thing you're going to find most commonly with Nintendo because they design around, like, points of interest. That's how they do their map design is through line-of-sight contact with points of interest. And so what I mean when I say they follow the Nintendo principle is uh, they've spackled the skyline and also just kind of the horizon with little things that you see and you think to yourself, I wonder what that is. And then you kind of just, like, wander over there and there are enough little action RPG fights like in between all the little areas that you walk between that like you level up a little bit you get a tiny bit stronger like you have a couple like little feeder fights where you scuffle with somebody and then you know you arrive at your destination to do some exploration and some investigation i need this guy it's an abandoned logging camp huh i need this guy right here he's just gonna run away huh that's what's gonna happen here all right i'm gonna fight this guy then Look at what I did to this guy. You see that guy right there? He used to have an arm. Now he doesn't have an arm anymore. If you don't come back, I'm going to do the same thing to you. I know that's a really poor argument because I'm going to do the same thing to you even if you do come back. But... There you go. Reach down inside your tummy bits and find your bravery. Uh, you can also do a bump. Just like when you play Vermintide. Like, the, the combat system in this game actually feels like a like a low-budget version of Vermintide. That's pretty much it. It's like Vermintide if it was put together by, like, one guy who had, like, no budget whatsoever and was kind of doing his best. Uh, a lot of the swings have kind of, like, that vibe to them. The blocks feel pretty good. Honestly, I, I think for one guy trying to replicate what is considered to be one of the best combat systems in Melee of all time, there's, like, Mountain Blade Warband. There's, like, Chivalry. And, you know, there's Vermintide. Like, those are the games that are held to a, a very, very high level of respect when it comes to their melee combat. Um, pulling it off to the extent that this game has is actually pretty good. Uh, the weapons have different, like, attack cycles and things that they can do. Feels pretty good to me so far. It's kind of hoping we'd find, like, a treasure or something around here. Not just a couple bandits lackadaisically laying around. So we got bandit daggers... Can we equip those? Oh, we can, dude, and they have no stamina cost. Oh, dude, I'm about to be like a whirling dervish of, of blades and misery. This is about to be incredible. Uh, it looks like this location was just an excuse to have a bandit or two, unless there's a crate or something inside this tent. Eh, it seems like this place is mostly devoid of anything lootable. I'm not going to complain too much because we got that silver coin and then on top of that we also got like a new set of weapons off the bandits that were out here. So it's not that big of a deal, not that far of a foul. Uh, what is that right there? Can I loot that? Oh, it kind of like stood out to the eye. Are you a bandit too? What's up with you, bro? You want to do this thing? You want to dance? Let's go, fancy man. Let's do this thing. I want to test these daggers out on that sternum. Let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. Oof, that felt pretty. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Bop. Oh, he parried? Okay, okay. Can I do that? Ooh, busted his head, though. You see that? You see that right there? He went for a swing, and I punched him in the face by holding down right-click and left-clicking. Dude, if I, I, if you're good at... So, like, I'm pretty good at Vermintide. Like, I, I take pride in my Vermintide skills. It's one of the few games I'm pretty good at. If you know how that game functions, you're going to be okay here. Like, you're going to see the openings... Uh, when it comes to fighting, we got a claymore. Let's try that out. Okay. Could use a little bit more wind up, I think. I think thus far, I like the daggers the best. That could use a tiny bit more wind up, but it still feels pretty good just because they've got the, the woof 
of the blade being swung in the right spot. So the audio is doing the heavy lifting right there. I'm hoping we can get like another level or two or like maybe some armor or something. And then we can go out to the island. It does seem like we've kind of run out of trees that are choppable out this way, though. It looked like most of them were kind of centered near where you enter the zone. Anything inside the log? Anything inside the camp? Oh, you can interact with this. Hey, we can cook. Cool. Uh, I guess put some flour. I bet we need water for that, though. What happens if I just put, like, a mushy right there? They don't make a valid recipe. They were returned to your inventory. So I just got to kind of like guess either that or people are going to teach me recipes along the way. So cooking system validated. So we have fishing so far. We have cooking. We have lumberjacking. We have masonry. Uh, we have all kinds of dude. How big is this zone? Jesus. There's another tower over there on top of this one that I just spent like 10 minutes walking towards. As, a, as someone that fits the Explorer Skinner box, this is really working for me right now. Okay, the reach on that wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be. We got him, though. He's down. Oh, we got another thing of his daggers. Nice. Okay. I'll probably sell those when I get back to town. If they're sellable. Oh, this guy got goodies. What you... <gasps> wow. You got all kinds of good stuff in here, man. We got spathas. We got all kinds of little thingies. What else you got laying around? Copper ore. Some rocks. Definitely take those. What else you got in here? A skillet. We've got axes. We've got clubs. We've got short swords, arming swords, just all kinds of options, apparently, if you are, are into the weaponry. I think the Spatha looked like it was probably our best bet right there as far as damage goes. It said 35. One thing I'm having trouble figuring out is that, like, I need stones, but I don't know exactly where we get stones from in this game. I'm not super sure about that. Uh, we were able to loot, like, standalone stones when we were inside the tent over there. But are there, like, larger quarrying spots? It looks like there are, because a quarrying spot just showed up on my little compass at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah, dude, there it is right there. Okay, so that's where we get stone from. Let me grab all this stone real quick. Oh, level four for iron. Okay, so we can't quite get that yet. Let me mine for a minute. Well, not much luck on the stone front. I only found two or three nodes for building up our base back at home. I want to get enough before I go back that I can open up the storefront. That's really my concern, is that like my inventory is already getting kind of crowded. I'm going to need a place to poop out these items in exchange for financial compensation. And so I was hoping that we would get enough rocks that we could make that kind of happen. But it looks like they're coming in a little bit slow. I've only got like 13. Oh, you can throw them if you put them in your hotbar. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's check out this wizard tower because that's what I'm interested in. We'll do this wizard tower and then we'll cut it on back home. I mean, we've gotten some good levels out here today. Things have gone all right. Even more weaponry, huh? All right. Uh, it looks like there's like level eight guys out here. I'm going to. Oh, there we go. Oh, that guy. Where'd that guy come from? I don't know his arms off now though. I'm gonna there we go knock him back. I think the parry is a good thing I think I'm doing that earlier I thought that they parried me, but I'm pretty sure I'm parrying them. So I think if you interrupt one of their swings Mid animation it gives you that little slow motion thing that you can do. What do you want to do man? All that lead up just to get lamped, bro. How do you feel right now? It's kind of a bummer. Oh, can I pick that? Oh. It apparently also has a physics system, so I can pick up dropped swords and stuff. And I can, like, throw them at people. All right. That's an actual interesting piece of information to stay wary of. Uh, is there anything going? Can I go inside this mine, dude? If I go inside this mine, if this mine is actually, like, an enterable location, I'm going to lose it. It's not. Okay. I was going to say, dude, that would be a little bit too perfect. Like, at this point, I, I like what the game has going on, and I think it's very, very interesting stuff. This may, this is becoming an early access that I'm incredibly excited about, and I've only played for about 30 minutes. I try to go into situations like this with some level of trepidity, because, like, I don't want to give the impression that I'm being too forgiving with a game, especially if it has glaring issues. I mean, there's a little bit of want to it, but I would say it's kind of like the good kind of wonk. 
not the bad kind of wonk. It's like the it's the endearing wonk, not the wonk that makes you want to tear your eyebrows off and throw them across the room. But this is the bloodline. So far, I, I think the mashup they have going on of like a Bethesda IP and like Vermintide is a really, really good thing. I, I think that's a strong play. There's such a lack of RPGs out there um, that have a combat system that's interested in being complex. You know, most games are just kind of like spam left click. This game is also spam left click. But, oh yeah, I figured out how to use the grappling hook too. You have a grappling hook and you can use it anywhere. It makes traversal very easy. You should consider using it. Uh, but as I was saying, this game is mostly spamming left click too. But there is some skill there in knowing when to parry and when to nudge. And, and like also when to kind of like slide out of the way by using your sprint. Like it, It's definitely got some things inside of there. And I think if they keep working on that, it's going to turn into something good. So this is the early access to watch, man. I liked what we've seen here. Uh, I, I'm pretty pleased with what I've played so far. The exploration layer feels really good. Like, I've been having a blast just looking. Can I wall run? Oh, my God. You can wall jump, dude. You can Super Mario N64 wall jump. No way, dude. Oh, okay. Yep. Keep an eye on this game. I, I feel like in a year or two, this game is going to be... This game is going to be attracting investors. I'll put it like that. There's going to be people being like, uh, how can I get in on this? Uh, my name is Splattercat. This is The Bloodline. Hopefully, you guys dug it. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But up until then, it's time for me to go. Take care, folks, and that's about all I've got.